Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. As abrupt climate change proceeds rapidly, we're seeing lots of very uh, strange and bizarre behavior on the planet. For example, in the last few years, because the jet streams have become so wavy and distorted and slow, the ridges are going far up into the Arctic in the middle of the winter, bringing above zero temperatures into the Arctic uh, over the sea ice, uh, you know, even up to the North Pole in the dead of winter, complete darkness, temperatures above zero, even uh, rainfall events. Okay, so in the last few videos, um, I showed how the jet streams are becoming so wavy and distorted and fractured and chaotic that they're essentially space filling. So they're, they're uh, covering a lot of region in both the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. And we're getting a lot of cases where there's, they're crossing the uh, equator almost all the way around the uh, circumference of the Earth. I've shown that in a few previous videos. So in the Southern Hemisphere, these, uh, these troughs, or you know, if you have to invert it, it's really the ridges, they're extending right into the, uh, right over, over Antarctica, right over the ice. They're bringing temperatures above zero uh, to the coastline of Antarctica, not just over the Antarctic Peninsula. And we're also getting rainfall events. Um, in fact, if you look recently uh, at some of the data, uh, some of the maps, some of the almost real-time data from Earth Null School, from Climate Reanalyzer, what you can see is that it's simultaneously raining at both the Arctic in both the Arctic uh, Ocean near the North Pole and also over Antarctica on the South Pole. So let's have a look at the data. So I'll get the lights for better contrast. And what you can see here is this is the US Navy data. This is the sea ice thickness. It shows the extent. This is from uh, August, about mid-August this time, but in 2012. So, so this is uh, three meter and thicker ice down below, the colors, the yellows, the greens, the reds. Reds are the five meter ice. This is two meter thick ice here, one meter thick ice, half a meter. And what you can see is there's a lot of multi-year ice. There's a lot of thick ice left in 2012. Fast forward to the same time, the same month. Mid, this is what, what this is. So this is August 2017. This is uh, the last uh, three weeks or so and uh, forecast from the model out a week into the future. And what you see here is you see almost no thick ice. There's almost no thick ice left. And what there is, is because of the, the we're not getting a counter uh, clockwise rotation and export out of the Fram Strait. So this is not going out, but it's sort of slipping through the Canadian archipelago. Um, so it's thin ice, Two, less than two meter, less than one meter, almost no thick ice left in the Arctic at the moment. And we still have about five, five weeks anyway of melt season left. So, so uh, you know, all bets are off on what's gonna happen. Um, if you add the, Ar the Arctic sea ice and the Antarctic sea ice, um, you get the global sea ice area. This was what happened in 2016. And the 20, 2017 curve is tracking along slightly below in terms of area. And the extent is really significantly below here. So this is this year. We're much e below even what we were last year. And look what the curve did last year. Um, you know, it was much lower than the envelope of curve. So we're rapidly losing sea ice around the planet. Now, this is, uh, so this is climate reanalyzer precipitation and clouds. What you can see here is the green areas over the Arctic are where it's right, where there's rain right now. Okay, so it's raining over the Arctic. If we just click on here and uh, change the views and go down to Antarctica, what you can see here is you can see rain at the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula. The, the, blue, the light blue is snow. There's also some rain on the coastline up here, further up the, from the peninsula. There's also rain along the coastlines here of, of uh, the eastern East Antarctica. Now remember that the, it's winter down there. It's completely dark. The sea ice is, has grown and is extending out. 
and we're still getting jet stream excur incursions into Antarctica, bringing, dragging along. So we're getting surface winds that are coming, bringing warm air up, making the temperatures on the coastlines above zero and uh, causing rainfall there. So let's have a look at some more of the details. So, so this is a five day forecast outlook maps for the Arctic Northern Hemisphere first. So all the areas above zero, so this is temperatures, five day forecast average um, for this week coming out, all of the green areas are above zero temperatures. This is a temperature anomaly. And if we go down here, this is minimum temperature, maximum temperature, look at the maximum temperature. So across most of the Arctic at some point, including the North Pole here, are gonna be above zero temperatures over the next week. Even the minimum temperatures um, are above zero around the outskirts here. Um, so that's melting the sea ice from above. And uh, we can look in the southern hemisphere. Whoops, southern hemisphere. Okay, and you can see the, uh, the five-day forecast average temperatures, but let's go down to the... Um, precipitation and clouds and you can see precipitation here um, expected and down here in this region expected within the next uh, five days that's uh, rainfall over Antarctica so we've seen it now let's go back and look at earth null school here so here we are in the Arctic again so if you just google earth null school uh, click on earth make sure it's set for air surface and temperature and uh, click on this to close it down and you can see all of the green areas are temperatures above zero uh, extending into the arctic so there's some warm temperatures almost 10 degrees here um, 10 to, over 10 degrees here you can see how the warm air is coming off of the land all along and there's area these are areas where there's no sea ice so this the water is warm also there um, and if we uh, loop back and look at Antarctica right now, uh, you know, cold areas, we can see some green excursions here, but there's not much reaching, you know, this is a, the, the most northerly point of Antarctica. Um, and you can see the surface winds, there's, there's, there's temperatures here that are, but they're not reaching the continent at the moment. Okay, um, there's other things you can look at. For example, um, total precipitable water, that's in the water, that's in the air column above from the surface up. Total uh, cloud, uh, this is uh, total cloud water. Okay, so you can see the, uh, where, where it's hot and warm and the air is coming over the warm water. It's picking up water vapor um, and it's bringing it, well into the, uh, well, well, well over the complete Ar Arctic Ocean pretty much. And you can see um, in the Southern Hemisphere what's happening. And there is water, there is uh, the jet streams and is causing the surface winds to bring, uh, there is water laden air coming up onto the continent here in the Southern Hemisphere also. Now, if we focus on the Antarctic Peninsula and zoom in, again, looking at air surface temperature, um, what you can see here is any green areas are above zero. So right here in this region, it's, it's just above zero. Down here, there's a couple green areas here. This is extending over the coastline, 0.8 degrees, a couple degrees, um, and also over here. Okay, so these are these parts of Antarctica on the coast are above zero, and it's just because of the way the surface winds are coming off. So um, you can try to, uh, you know, you can move three hours um, forward to see the change, or three hours backwards, you know, leave the leave the pointer at a certain region and see how the temperature is changing, and you can go back a full day. So it's kind of shifted. Now this area here is above zero. Um, there's some areas on the coastline right here that are above zero. Okay, you can shift back. So this is uh, this is August 8th 
it, it was August 9th before, um, and this is going back here. So you can just, you know, keep cycling back here and see how the surface winds are changing. Um, and, uh, you know, from, at, at, from time to time, the jet streams are so wavy um, and the surface winds are so wavy that they're bringing um, air above zero onto the continent of Antarctica in the middle of the Antarctic winter. And, uh, you know, there's, there's rainfall occurring um, for some of these uh, excursions or incursions into Antarctica. So this is, uh, you know, w welcome to the climate casino. You know, we're getting this weather weirding, weather whiplashing, weather wilding. Um, and uh, there's no part of the planet that is untouched. Look at this in, in this case here. Look at these winds here. Um, you know, very close to overriding the continent. And in fact, these winds became very strong at one point, um, you know, a few months ago, a month ago. And basically that's when Larsen C, which is in this region, uh, you know, shed 10% uh, of, its, of its ice. Okay, so we can go back here, you know, just keep going. So I, rec I recommend that you have a look at this, you know, try Google Earth Null School, bring it up here, look at a particular region, go back in time, you know, if, see, look at this. Look at these winds here. Okay, these are just missing, coming right over Antarctica. Some of them are hitting the islands here at the end of the peninsula, making temperatures above zero. Okay, it's not quite reaching it here in the main part of the peninsula. So I recommend that you try this. Let's look at south, let's look at the other side of Antarctica. So here we go. This is uh, August 12th, 2017. We get this finger here of above zero air, above zero temperature air coming right up, almost reaching the coastline, not quite reaching the coastline. Okay, in this case, and you can you can see what's happening over, this is uh, changing by a day. Um, if the computer will update, uh, here we go. So let's go back to where we were um, with that finger coming out and then you can change, adjust by three hours and see how it moves or see if it gets larger or smaller, you know, and how it, there, there it's a bit wider here you know, how it, how it progresses, okay? So I highly recommend that you play around with this software. Okay, this is going back to the Arctic. So I've got the, I zoomed in, I clicked here. This is as close as I could get to the North Pole. Um, and uh, you can see the temperature is 0 0.4 degrees here. Um, and I can go back, uh, so this is uh, August 6th. And I can go back and you can see um, how the patterns of air at the surface are changing over the, uh, over the uh, North Pole, over the, over the sea ice. So, you know, it's above zero. Of course, it's, it's melting um, ice at the surface. The wa warm water from below is coming up, melting the sea ice from below. There's also export of ice, export of ice. You know, watch the ice very carefully over the next... Uh, like I said, five weeks, six weeks, and uh, we'll see how much is left uh, at the end of the season. Now, Climate Reanalyzer, um, if you go to the home page and click on Daily Reanalysis and Sea Ice Maps, I selected the Arctic, maximum temperature at two meters um, for July 2017, and we'll start the uh, movie going here. Okay, so what you can see is this is a maximum daily temperature as it cycles through each day in July, and you can see the green areas are above zero. So on some days, you know, certain like 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 it, it varies from day to day. Okay, but often, you know, well over fifty percent of the entire Arctic Ocean is above zero. Okay, as we move through. July. Okay, and what we can do is we could select, change this to uh, the Antarctic, and this is the maximum temperature there. Okay, so we're looking for green. So you can see on the peninsula, some areas